GameStop Retro is a nightmare for collectors. Not to stroke my own ego, but I think that I am more qualified than anyone when it comes to talking about GameStop. I've made so many videos and shorts over the years talking about my experience shopping at GameStop as a collector. I ended up going to a bunch of GameStops and picking up over 30 games today. I got this stack of games right here for pretty much free through a method that I like to call GameStop abuse. And I can confidently say that this is going to be a horrible change for us collectors. Actually, contrary to popular belief, GameStop has been selling retro games for years at this point. It just has been kind of under the radar. Sometimes you had to ask for them to show you what retro games they had in stock. Sometimes they just didn't have any at all. But in general, most stores had retro games available. And not only did they have them, they had them for cheaper than anyone else. I've been finding cool stuff at GameStop for years, and to be honest with you, it's been my main source of finding games to keep for my collection. Now, a lot of my GameStop hunting depended on the fact that they ran sales. 4 for 40, 4 for 20, 4 for 10, buy 2, get 1. Those are the good ones that they ran. But also important is the fact that they usually had their prices below market value, especially if you found the games complete in box. But now, they're actually increasing their prices to be even above market value in some cases. Well, for years, they had their GameCube games underpriced. For example, they had Pokemon Coliseum for $30, and I bought it there a couple years ago. Now they have it for like $120, so the deal's kind of gone there, unless you get it during a buy to get one. And at that point, you're never going to find any of their $120 games to really take advantage of that deal. Now that's just an example, and while even with the GameStop retro movement being in place, I've still gotten some good deals from GameStop, I just don't think they're going to be as good as they were in the past. And not only are they not going to be as good as they were in the past, they're also not going to be as frequent as they were. Thanks to the surprising amount of publicity that they've gotten from this and this announcement pretty much going Hollywood for them, people are now looking at GameStop for retro games. Them putting this ad all over Instagram for retro game collectors, the YouTubers spamming posts about this, including myself, I admittedly, people are going to be looking at GameStop for retro games, which is just going to cause more competition, and anything that's good is going to get bought much quicker than it would in the past. To put it simply, the fact that GameStop was the best kept secret among collectors is now gone, and it's pretty much mainstream at this point for anyone who collects games, and it's kind of unfortunate. Just a quick little side note, something that I found very funny and very telling about how incompetent GameStop is, is I saw this ad on Instagram, right? It has a conveyor belt of all stuff that they sell is what you would assume. However, there is a PSP and a PSP game, GTA Vice City Stories, on that conveyor belt. They don't take in PSP stuff for trade for whatever reason. They don't even take the good stuff. They don't take any of the Persona games, any of the GTA games, anything. They don't take any of them. That's twofold for how incompetent they are. Not only the fact that they don't take it at all, which they absolutely should, and also the fact that their advertising is just blatantly wrong. And, you know, GameStop being incompetent also leads into the fact that, despite the fact that it's bad for collectors, it's also going to fail. There's no way they can pull this off. It's just not possible for them. Now, the biggest issue GameStop is going to face is acquiring the inventory needed to meet this high demand. Everyone knows how bad GameStop pays, especially for higher-end stuff. I mean, it's just embarrassing. It'd be one thing if their trade credit was just bad. But it's also infamously bad. Everyone who collects games who has higher end stuff knows not to give it to GameStop because they're going to get ripped off. Now the days of people dying to get rid of a box of old GameCube games that they have in their basement are over. Most people know what they have at this point and that just bodes horribly for GameStop. No one's going to trade in their GameCube games to, p to GameStop for nothing, for peanuts. Now, of course I'd like to clarify that of course it's not going to be nobody. There's still going to be outliers but it's not going to be enough people to satiate the amount of people looking for them at their stores at this point with how big this announcement is. Now the next issue I'd like to mention with why it's going to fail is because of how GameStop prices stuff. GameStop does not differentiate their price based on if a game has the case or doesn't. Now anyone who buys or sells games knows game cases matter. They matter a lot for value and GameStop just doesn't differentiate it. I'm not saying this is good or bad for collectors, but what I am saying is that it's going to cause their retro initiative to fail. Anything they have that's good, that's complete in box, is going to sell quickly because it's underpriced compared to market, while anything that's game only is going to never fucking sell because no one's paying 55 for a cartridge only Omega Ruby. Now that's just one example of course, but there are so many disc only games that are just sitting in GameStops are rotting because they're overpriced and that's never going to change unless they start differentiating the prices between complete and box and loose. Now the third and final reason why GameStop is going to fail is because they don't take every game in trade. 
Now, I'm not saying that they should fill their shelves up with bullshit games on the PS2, but what I am saying is that having, you know, some games in stock at any point in time is actually a good thing, not a bad thing. Like I previously mentioned, they don't take any PSP consoles or games in trade at all. I mean, for fuck's sake, they don't even have Rule of Rose on their buy list. That's ridiculous. GameStop was once the best kept secret in all of game collecting, but now they've destroyed it in pursuit of an unachievable goal. Most game stores that are actually good get their best inventory from other collectors who are looking to sell their collection or just kind of rotate out their highest priced items. Now let's say hypothetically you're a collector and you have a copy of Haunting Ground that you want to sell to a store. You could either go to a local store and get a couple hundred bucks for it, or you could take your ass over to GameStop and get $46.50 store credit for it.